vote yes on the nomination of Judge Edward Chen to be a district judge for the Northern District of California. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. I yield the floor. I note the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka.
Senator from Kansas. I ask unanimous consent that the quorum call be vitiated. Without objection, so ordered. All time has expired. The question is on the nomination. Is there a sufficient second? There appears to be. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka, Mr. Alexander. Ms. Ayon. Mr. Barrasso. Mr. Bacchus. Mr. Baggage. Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bingaman. Mr. Blumenthal. Mr. Blunt. Mr. Bozeman. Mrs. Boxer. Mr. Brown of Massachusetts. Mr. Brown of Ohio. Mr. Burr. Ms. Cantwell. Mr. Cardin. Mr. Carper. Mr. Casey. Mr. Chambliss. Mr. Coates. Mr. Coburn. Mr. Cochran. Ms. Collins. Mr. Conrad.
Mr. Coons. Mr. Corker. Mr. Corning. Mr. Crapo. Mr. Dement. Mr. Durbin. Mr. Enzi. Mrs. Feinstein. Mr. Franken. Mrs. Gillibrand. Mr. Graham. No. Mr. Grassley. Mrs. Hagen. Mr. Harkin. Mr. Hatch. Mr. Heller. Mr. Hoven. Mrs. Hutchison. Mr. Inhofe. Mr. Inouye. Mr. Isaacson. Mr. Johans. Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. Mr. Carey. Mr. Kirk. Ms. Klobuchar. Mr. Cole. Mr. Kyle. Ms. Landrew. Mr. Lautenberg. Mr. Leahy. Mr. Lee. Mr. Levin. Mr. Lieberman. Mr. Luger. Mr. Manchin. Mr. McCain. Mrs. McCaskill. Mr. McConnell. Mr. Menendez. Mr. Merkley. Ms. Mikulski. Mr. Moran.
Ms. Markowski. Mrs. Murray. Mr. Nelson of Nebraska. Mr. Nelson of Florida. Mr. Paul. Mr. Portman. Mr. Pryor. Mr. Reed of Rhode Island. Mr. Reed of Nevada. Mr. Rich. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Rockefeller. Mr. Rubio. Mr. Sanders. Mr. Schumer. Mr. Sessions. Mrs. Shaheen. Mr. Shelby. Ms. Snow. Ms. Stabenow. Mr. Tester. Mr. Thune. Mr. Toomey. Mr. Udall of Colorado. Mr. Udall of New Mexico. Mr. Vitter. Mr. Warner. Mr. Webb. Mr. White House. Mr. Wicker. Mr. Wyden. Senators voting in the affirmative. Akaka, Begich, Bingaman, Blumenthal, Boxer, Cantwell, Cardin, Casey, Conrad, Durbin, Franken, Johnson of South Dakota, Klobuchar, Cole, 
Leahy, Manchin, Murray, Nelson of Nebraska, Reed of Nevada, Shaheen, Snow, Tester, Warner, Webb, White House, Wyden. Mrs. Feinstein, aye. Mr. Nelson of Florida, aye. Mr. Carey, Mr. Carey, aye. Mr. Pryor, aye. Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, aye. Senators voting in the negative. Alexander, Ayotte, Blunt, Burr, Chambliss, Coburn, Cochran, Corker, Cornyn, Crapo, Dement, Enzi, Graham, Grassley, Hatch, Heller, Hoven, Hutchison, Isaacson, Johans, Johnson of Wisconsin, Lee, McCain, McConnell, Paul, Portman, Roberts, Rubio, Thune, Toomey. Mr. Shelby, Mr. Shelby, no, Mr. Luger, Mr. Luger, no, Mr. Brown of Massachusetts, aye, Mrs. Gillibrand, Mrs. Gillibrand, aye, Mr. Moran, Mr. Moran, no, Mr. Wicker, Mr. Wicker, no, Mr. Coates, Mr. Coates, no. Mr. Coons, Mr. Coons, aye. Now, what do I have next? Ms. Collins, Ms. Collins, aye. Mr. Udall of New Mexico, Mr. Udall of New Mexico, aye. Mr. Brown of Ohio, Mr. Brown of Ohio, aye. Mr. Barrasso. Mr. Barrasso, no. Mr. Lieberman. Mr. Lieberman, aye. Mr. Schumer. Mr. Schumer, aye. Ms. Mikulski. Ms. Mikulski, aye. Mr. Sessions. Mr. Sessions, no. Mr. Risch. Mr. Risch, no. Ms. Stabenow. Ms. Stabenow, aye. Mr. Menendez. Mr. Menendez, Aye. Mr. Lautenberg. Mr. Lautenberg. Aye. Mr. Bozeman. Mr. Bozeman. No, Mr. Kirk. Mr. Kirk. No. Mr. Carper. Mr. Carper. Aye. Mr. Inhoff. Mr. Inhoff. No. Mr. Levin. Mr. Levin. Aye.
Is it Hagen? Mrs. Hagen. Aye. Mr. Udall of Colorado. Mr. Udall of Colorado. Aye. Mr. Sanders. Mr. Sanders. Aye. Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bennett. Aye. Mr. Inouye. Mr. Inouye, aye. Mr. Baucus. Mr. Baucus, aye. Ms. Murkowski. Ms. Murkowski, aye. Mrs. McCaskill. Mrs. McCaskill, Aye. Ms. Landrew. Ms. Landrew. Aye. Mr. Merkley, Mr. Merkley, aye. Mr. Kyle, Mr. Kyle, no.
Is there any member in the chamber who wishes to vote or change their vote? If not, on this vote, the yeas are 56, the nays are 42. The nomination is confirmed. Mr. President. Majority Leader. I ask you unanimous consent the Senate proceed to a period of morning business for debate only until 7 p.m. tonight. Senators during that period of time will be allowed to speak for up to 10 minutes each. Without objection, so ordered. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that at 2 p.m. tomorrow, May 11th, the Senate proceed to executive session to consider nomination number 44, calendar number 44, that there be an hour of debate equally divided in the usual form, that upon the use or yielding back of that time, the Senate proceed to vote without any action or debate on calendar number 44. That the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid on the table with no intervening action or debate, that no further motions be in order to the nomination, and any statements related to the nomination be printed in the record, that the President of the United States be immediately notified of the Senate's action, and the Senate then resume legislative session. Is there objection? Without objection, so ordered. <laughs> Okay, absent quorum. The president will be notified of the Senate action on the confirmation. Mr. President, I would ask the period of morning business now be uh, noticed. Uh, Senate will now proceed to morning business. Would note the absent quorum. And the clerk will call the roll of the Senate. Mr. Kaka. President. Senator from Montana. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, are we in a quorum call? We are. I ask the quorum call be eviscerated. Without objection, and the Senator from Montana is recognized. Thank you. Mr. President, I rise in support of legislation that I'm proud to co-sponsor to finally end the taxpayer handouts to the world's largest oil companies as they rake in record profits. This measure is about accountability. It's about responsibility. It's about fairness. When I got off the tractor from planting spring wheat last weekend, I went to fill my tank. The cost was $3.69 a gallon in Big Sandy, Montana, almost a dollar higher than it was just a few months ago. But while I am paying close to 4 bucks a gallon at the pump, like other working Americans, the oil company execs are padding stock options bonuses. They're diminishing their investment here in America, choosing instead to use tax loopholes to offshore their production. I'd like to make just three quick points today about the over $4 billion in tax earmarks that the biggest oil companies in America are receiving today. First, they never asked for them. Second, they don't need them. And finally, they're not good for America or our economy. These taxpayer handouts are running up our national debt and taking our jobs overseas, and they expose us to higher gas prices. In 2005, the CEOs of the five largest oil companies testified in the Senate about these subsidies. When asked directly about these oil and gas tax breaks, all five executives said they didn't ask for them. They agreed with President Bush that the price of oil, at that time over $55 a barrel, that they didn't need those tax incentives. And today, as we all know, oil is at about $109 per barrel. The CEO of Chevron told the committee that any of these tax breaks, quote, will have a minimal impact on our, on our company. Minimal. Let me be clear, as those executives were then, this bill has nothing to do with Chevron or Conoco or Exxon's ability to operate refineries or put folks to work here at home. 
It has everything to do with holding their top-level executives accountable to all American taxpayers as they rake in billions of dollars in profits every year. Right now, big oil executives are writing off the royalties that they pay to foreign countries as taxes, and until we fix it, all of us are paying for it. It means you and I are footing the bill every time one of these big companies writes a check to the government of Saudi Arabia or Nigeria. And they're telling us they don't want it or don't need it. We should do the fiscal responsible thing, and that is close these loopholes. Instead, we should use that $8.5 billion to pay down our own deficit, and that's what this bill does. Special tax breaks are supposed to make companies more competitive and get new technologies into the market. But for the major oil companies, we've written a privileged tax code just for them. Some of these provisions have been on the books since 1913. Now, I don't know what companies after 98 years still need a subsidy. But if it does, either it isn't very effective or the system is being abused. As you'll hear again and again this week, because it is just an astonishing number, as gas prices surpass four bucks a gallon, oil companies are getting $4 billion annually in tax breaks. The big five oil companies have made nearly a trillion dollars in profit over the last decade. Nearly 32 billion of that came in the first three months of this year alone. But what's happening to gas prices? Rather than bring them down at the pump, these giveaways merely line executives' pockets and run up the deficit, all the while gas prices have gone up. For example, Exxon, the biggest of the oil companies in the United States, made more than $9 billion in profit last year from just their U.S. operations. And how much do they pay in taxes? 39 million bucks. That's 0.04 percent. But this is more fair than in 2009 when Exxon received a $156 million tax refund from the IRS. That means that we as taxpayers are paying them. The tax code is broken. This bill will help fix it. Right now, we're making tough choices about how we get a handle on this nation's debt. We have tough debates ahead about heating homes in rural America and investing in crumbling highways and strengthening the future of Medicare. All the while, we are still literally writing checks to our biggest oil companies. We don't need them. After causing the lar largest oil spill, offshore oil spill in American history, BP still managed to rake in more than $7 billion in profit, up 17 percent from the year before. But most of these big companies are not developing their onshore resources here at home. How do I look at the oil worker in Montana's Bakken field in the face and say we're giving the largest oil companies a billion dollars a year to go drill overseas, taking your opportunities offshore? Dual capacity, the most egregious of these tax provisions, subsidizes $1 billion each year in royalty payments to foreign governments that don't like us very much. We don't let companies producing in America credit royalty payments to their taxes, so why would we do the same for companies who produce outside the U.S.? And does it make it safer? Does it bring stability to the market? Absolutely not. As we've all watched in the last few months, turmoil in the Middle East has driven up speculation and driven up prices. Oil prices fell about 10 percent last week. That's not enough to relieve hardworking Montanans with any change in price at the pump. Prices didn't fall because of the discovery of a new oil field or new technology, because some folks on Wall Street moved some numbers around on a piece of paper. That's no accountability in that, and that's what we're trying to change. But unlike on Wall Street, there are places where folks are doing hard work, oil discovery, and developing the technology to lower the cost of oil. A lot of that has to do with the small guys in the oil business, and they are successful. In fact, domestic production is going strong at its highest level in almost a decade. They're taking risks and getting new technology into the field, like in eastern Montana. My state is home to likely the most productive domestic onshore oil field in the United States. And small oil companies are doing good, responsible, in securing America's energy future. The Bakken field is estimated to hold nearly 7 billion barrels of oil. They are leading the way in developing new technology for oil field development. Where is Exxon? They aren't reinvesting the last quarter's $11 billion back in the U.S. exploration. In fact, in 2009, they paid their shareholders 90 percent of the profits to shareholders, leaving just 10 percent to invest in their workforce, research and development, exploration, safety, and expanding energy frontier. Contrary to what some of my colleagues are saying, eliminating these wasteful subsidies won't raise gas prices. And I want to repeat that. Eliminating wasteful subsidies will not raise gas prices. 
Many of the handouts have been on the books for decades and prices have continued to rise. It is time to close the loopholes for big oil in order to strengthen our national security and our energy future. It is time to end the taxpayer handouts to big oil. This bill returns us to a responsible path forward towards energy development and benefits taxpayers and the consumers. And it starts addressing the debt and the deficit. It's a right thing to do. And with that, Mr. President, I yield the floor and suggest